Hey guys, it's the Viatross. I'm about to go see Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, but before seeing it, I think it's important to give you my expectations of the film, and to do that, I think I have to talk about the original movie. Now, I actually had never seen the original Beetlejuice until last night in preparation for this movie review. And I will say, despite it having come out like over 30 years ago, it's a pretty solid movie. Like I enjoyed it overall. Like the first half of the movie, I really liked it. I was really enjoying the like very wholesome relationship. I really liked Gina Davis in general. And then just the exploration of like the afterlife, kind of learning the rules and how the premise unfolds. The thing is the second half, I wasn't as into it. I think it kind of surprisingly slow down quite a bit once they introduce the titular character and i think part of it i think he's fine and like you know i'd heard of the movie before i knew a lot of references or imagery from the film i just didn't know what they meant until actually seeing it but the character i think some of the personality is kind of better left in the 80s like he's a lot more pervy than i was expecting and not in a haha what a rascal kind of way more so in a ooh, that's pretty concerning kind of way and so I think that is a product of its time. But overall, I thought it was pretty solid and like kind of a little disappointed that I hadn't seen it until now. But I will say, now looking forward to the future of the sequel, my expectations, I'm, I'd be a little wary in general of just a Beetlejuice sequel because the first one I feel like what I really enjoyed about was kind of learning about the world and the way it unra like presented itself. And you kind of got to go through understanding it following the main character's experience of oh we're dead like we're in the afterlife now and everything and it's kind of like if you see a magician pull a rabbit out of a hat it's kind of like oh that's surprising it's pretty cool but then the second time if they show you a hat you kind of like no oh i i know where this is going and it kind of feels tough to really make that impressive again and i don't really feel like there's a easy way to kind of like subvert expectations in a good way and so I'm a bit wary about it in general. Like, seeing the trailer, it kind of felt a little off. That it's almost like having it on, like, modern picture quality and stuff like that felt a little odd. That's almost like if they had, like, a film grain effect. Something like that. It almost feels like it'd be more natural. But not to... I don't want to get into this whole filmography type of filming, what will fix it. But it just kind of felt a little off to me and not something that I felt like was going to be really great. But I'll see the movie myself in just a bit and give you my thoughts on it. But I'm cautiously optimistic, but we'll see. All right, guys, I've now seen the new Beetlejuice movie. And overall, it was fine. Like, there's some good moments throughout it. But between those great moments, it's kind of just okay. And I think the biggest issue with it is that it doesn't feel like a movie that they made because they're like, oh, I have this new idea or like this new twist that I'm really passionate about. It really felt like it was something that's like, well, it's marketable and it will probably make money, but it didn't really feel like they knew where to go with it when they started. It just kind of felt like, yeah, we can do this. And so let's figure it out. And it doesn't really come together that well. Like, it's okay, but I think one thing is also that from the first movie that I'm sure a lot of people are very familiar with and like very passionate about, it jumps ahead to like modern time and they introduce some characters, they get rid of some characters, and it feels like it's a while of kind of just explaining where things are now and what's happened rather than just like, okay, it's 30 years in the future, now we're going to keep going. It just kind of feels like very... Like, it takes a bit of explanation, and the explanation, it's not something that's like, oh, oh okay, that, that's a bit different, but that's cool. It's like, oh, this is a bit different, and why? So, a bit disappointing, but, you know, like I said, there's some really good moments that I was laughing pretty hard, and harder than I expected, and there's, like, some good scenes, and I like that they still stuck with practical effects. You can definitely, like, tell that they did do practical effects, and I feel like that's something that is kind of commendable in, like, modern time with the current scale of, like, movies. But the writing itself and the concepts that they kind of explore not really doing a whole lot for me. And I think the biggest thing that kind of hurt is that the first movie, you start the movie up, and it's like, hey, there's Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin. They're, like, a really wholesome couple, and they love this house. Everyone in the city, they talk about how nice the house is and stuff like that. 
And it's like, okay, I'm like, I'm already bought in, I'm invested. And then stuff happens that's like, oh, someone wants to like buy the house. And then like, oh, they died. Now they want to like protect their house and everything. I felt invested. And it's like, okay, I understand where we're going. That's like, here's the next step. Okay, we explore that. And then here's another thing and explore that. This movie, it just kind of feels like they jump ahead and they're like, hey, here's what's going on. And it's confusing. And then throughout the rest of the movie, the events or like the sequence of events it doesn't feel like there's a flow to it. It just kind of feels like chaos and stuff happens. And then that's about it. So a bit disappointing, especially since they don't have Gina Davis or Alec Baldwin in the movie. They never show them. They kind of talk about them a little bit near the beginning, but it's like three lines and they just move on from it. And so that was like really disappointing for me to see. And also, you know, they have a lot of the same actors uh the dad from the original they can't have him in the movie not because he's not around anymore but because other issues with him that he's not allowed to be around kids so they kind of just work around it but it's kind of in a weird way that i feel like it'd make more sense if they just kind of had him like pass away in movie like a decade ago and then they just kind of don't really need to address it again but they have like keep the character but not the actor and it's kind of creative like you know it's not satisfying it's not something that's like oh this is cool it just kind of feels like very confusing for the most part but i will say this isn't a spoiler of the movie itself the funniest part of my entire experience seeing this movie was that i'm in the theater oh like opening night they play the trailers they play the intro they play the nicole kidman we come to this place to laugh, to love, and like that whole sequence, then like fades to black, and it's like, all right, the movie's gonna begin. And instead of the movie beginning, they just show like Wolverine and Deadpool, and it's playing music that's like red and yellow, red and yellow, uh uh, uh you know who it is. And it's like advertising Deadpool and Wolverine, but it's not even like a trailer playing, it's just a static poster. It's like we're we're in a theater watching a desktop wallpaper of Deadpool and Wolverine with this music playing of uh uh red and yellow red and yellow you know who it is and it goes on for like 40 seconds like there's no motion it's just the music playing and I was watching I was like this is weird like the movie came out like almost a month ago I looked it up before filming this it came out over a month ago it came out July 26th and they're making everyone sit through a 47 desktop wall a 40 second long desktop wallpaper with that music playing in the background. I was like stifling laughter the whole time. But that probably, hopefully won't happen in your theater experience, but that is definitely the most memorable part of it for me. But without the way, now that's about all I want to say before getting to spoilers. So this is going to be a spoiler warning before I get into details of specifics or things that I wouldn't want to know myself before seeing the movie. So this is your last morning, three, two, one, let's get into it. All right, so as I mentioned, they jump ahead in time, they kind of explain some stuff, but it feels odd. And they kind of explain stuff that I don't feel like any fan had been asking. Like they show how Beetlejuice died and I kind of feel like they only show that because it's relevant to the new like villain that they're kind of adding to this movie. But it's kind of like Beetlejuice is kind of a bad guy. So would the villain of the villain be a good guy? But it's just kind of like stuff happens and it's kind of like, oh, OK, like now I know how Beetlejuice died originally, but it didn't feel like something that I that's not something I'd been asking myself. And now knowing it, it's not really anything that's like, oh, it's like so different. It like really changes the character at all. And with the introduction of new characters, I kind of felt like they were mostly OK. Like they have Astrid played by Jenna Ortega, who is the daughter of Winona Ryder's character from the original. and. I feel like, yeah, it makes sense to put Jenna Ortega in a Tim Burton movie, especially after Wednesday. But her character, it kind of feels like she's just kind of there. Like, I don't feel like she was as charming as the, as Winona Ryder's original character in the original movie. And they kind of spend some time with it, but it's kind of like, I don't really know who this is. And trying to inter introduce her, it's not as strong as the original movie kind of introducing these characters so it just kind of feels like we're getting passed off to something else for some reason and it's not really worth that complexity 
and yeah like her whole relationship with this guy that she meets and it's like yeah it turns out that he's a ghost and all this stuff of trying to swap places with her so that he can live and turns out he murdered his parents and stuff like that that reveal it's kind of interesting it's like oh okay but the whole romance before that felt kind of weird like when they kiss it was like this feels awkward and then the whole thing following that it just doesn't feel like it really fit into the rest of the story it just kind of felt like oh this is something that we can like have a different plot to fall to like jump to every once in a while so Overall, I feel like the additions, not really a whole lot, like, of value added. But, I mean, I think it's fine. Like, watching in the theater, it wasn't like, this is terrible or anything that, like, retroactively makes the original worse. But it just kind of felt, like, very unnecessary. But I think that's about all I have to really complain about. Like, there's some other stuff that I probably wouldn't like or that I could pick out and say, like, oh, this didn't really work for me. But I want to be able to focus and talk about the great moments that I really enjoyed throughout the movie. Because there were some that I was like, man, this is great. And then it just kind of goes back to being okay. And so throughout it, you know, it's not just one moment that was good. But I feel like the first one is, the earliest one in the movie, is when the bride of Beetlejuice, like, gets shocked and she starts coming alive and, like, reassembling herself. And just seeing the special, like, the effects of, like, the body parts, like, crawling around assembling and like she's stapling herself together and the music playing that like really elevated it i was like oh, okay this is like really cool also like the whole danny devito cameo it was it kind of felt odd that's like okay you only had you added danny devito but only for that long but i mean still nice to see him bit of a unexpected character to just play a janitor in the underworld but you know i'll take more danny devito if you if you're offering it and also Willem Dafoe's character was really enjoyable throughout the whole movie. Like, I felt like every scene with Willem Dafoe in it was enjoyable. Like, his character that is an actor that played a cop or a detective, and then it, after dying, continues trying to be a detective, even though he's not, that's not what he was. He was just an actor. That's, a, like, a really interesting concept. And I feel like if it was someone else playing it, then would be like, oh, that's kind of interesting, but it's, it's fine, the execution of it. But with Willem Dafoe playing it, I was like, all right, he's kind of nailing it. And the scene where he goes, yeah, who knew it was a live grenade? And he's, like, missing part of his head. I was like, okay, that's a pretty, like, interesting look by itself. But then also just the, like, who knew it was a live grenade? I was like, all right. That was, like, the most off-guard laugh of the entire film for me. And I feel like they tried to incorporate music throughout the movie a bit, like, quite a bit. And I feel like it's fine. Like, the first movie, they, I don't, I don't know the name of the song, but, like, they play it multiple times. And then in this movie, they do call back to it, but it's like a, a child choir singing it at a funeral, which was like a weird place to sing that song. But it's kind of like, okay, you know, you're doing a callback and then able to move on from that. And the scene where they leave, like they talk to Beetlejuice for the first time, and then she's leaving and he's like playing his guitar on the little tombstone. And it's like, wherever you go, I will follow you. I was like, okay, this is really weird, but like, this is working. And they do a few other songs throughout that. I was like, not working as well, but I did really enjoy that one specific scene of it. And so, you know, overall, I thought it was fine. There's some great moments, and but overall kind of felt a bit unnecessary and not really something that I can really recommend to someone that's not already like a Beetlejuice fan. Which also on top of that, you kind of have to have seen the first one to be able to really enjoy this one properly. Just because a lot of it, it feels like if you don't recognize the characters, some of it, it would be maybe less confusing, but a lot of the concepts in the world, it's already presented as if you already are familiar with it, which makes sense. But if you haven't seen the first one, I really won't recommend seeing this one. And it's only if you really like the first one that I think I would recommend this one. And even that, it's kind of like mostly just so you know what it is, rather than like, oh, you're, you'll definitely have a good time overall. But I think that about wraps up my thoughts on it. And you know, if nothing else, I'm glad that this movie got me to watch the first one. Because it is, overall, like, very solid. And I really enjoy the first half of that movie. Like, definitely glad I saw that. So, that's going to wrap up my thoughts on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And so, thanks for watching, if, especially if you've seen this far. I truly appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.